Welcome to part two of chapter um, chapter 13 for Matilda the, for the read aloud video. So where we left off for part one for chapter 13, Ms. Trunchbull was in Miss Honey's room and she was asking Miss Honey's students what they learned this week and she's not very pleased and let's find out what happens to Eric. So remember, Eric is spelling the word what? Eric hesitated. And then he said very slowly, it's not W-O-T and it's not W-H-O-T. Ah, I know. It must be W-H-O-T-T. -T. Standing behind Eric, the trunchbull reached out and took hold of the boy's two ears, one with each hand, pinching them between forefinger and thumb. Ow! Eric cried. Ow! You're hurting me! I haven't started yet, the trunchbull said briskly. And now, taking a firm grip on his two ears, she lifted him bodily out of his seat and held him aloft. Like Rupert before him, Eric squealed the house down. From the back of the classroom, Miss Honey cried out, Miss Trunchbull, don't! Please let him go! His ears might come off. They'll never come off, the trunchbull shouted back. I have discovered through long experience, Miss Honey, that the ears of small boys are stuck very firmly to their heads. Let him go, Miss Trunchbull, please, begged Miss Honey. You could damage him. You really could. You could wrench them right off. Ears never come off, the Trunchbull shouted. They stretch most marvelously, like these are doing now, but I can assure you, they never come off. Eric was squealing louder than ever and pedaling the air with his legs. Matilda had never seen a boy, or anyone else for that matter, held aloft by his ears alone. Like Miss Honey, she felt sure both ears were going to come off at any moment with all the weight that was on them. And that's Miss Honey. The Trunchbull was shouting, The word what is spelled W-H-A-T. Now spell it, you little wart. Eric did not hesitate. He had learnt from watching Rupert a few minutes before that the quicker you answer, the quicker you were released. W-H-A-T, he squealed, spells what? Still holding him by the ears, the trunchbull lowered him back into his chair behind his desk. Then she, show, um, then she marched back to the front of the class dusting off her hands one against the other, like someone who has been handling something rather grimy. That's the way to make them learn, Miss Honey, she said. You take it from me. It's no good just telling them. You've got to hammer it into them. There's nothing like a little twisting and twiddling to encourage them to remember things. It concentrates their minds wonderfully. You could do them permanent damage, Miss Trunchbull, Miss Honey cried out. Oh, I have? I'm quite sure I have, the Trunchbull answered, grinning. Eric's ears will have stretched quite considerably in the last couple of minutes. They'll be much longer now than they were before. There's nothing wrong with that, Miss Honey. It'll give him an interesting pixie look for the rest of his life. But, Miss Trunchbull, oh, do shut up, Miss Honey. You're as wet as any of them. If you can't cope in here... Then you can go and find a job in some cotton wool private school for rich brats. When you have been teaching for as long as I have, you'll realize that it's no good at all being kind to children. Read Nicholas Nickleby, Miss Honey, by Mr. Dickens. Read about Mr. Wackford Squeers, the admirable headmaster of Doth Boys Hall. He knew how to handle the little brutes, didn't he? He knew how to use the birch, didn't he? He kept their backsides so warm you could have fried eggs and bacon on them. A fine book, that. But I don't suppose this bunch of morons 
we've got here will ever read it because by the look of them, they're never going to learn to read anything. I've read it, Matilda said quietly. The trunchbull flicked her head round and looked carefully at the small girl with dark hair and deep brown eyes sitting in the second row. What did you say? She asked sharply. I said, I've read it, Miss Trunchbull. Read what? Nicholas Nick, uh, Nickleby, Miss Trunchbull. You are lying to me, madam, the Trunchbull shouted, glaring at Matilda. I doubt, I doubt there is a single child in the entire school who has read that book. And here you are, an unhatched shrimp sitting in the lowest form there is, trying to tell me a whopping great lie like that. Why do you do it? You must make take me for a fool. Do you take me for a fool, child? Well, Matilda said. Then she hesitated. She would have liked to said, to have said, Yes, I jolly well do. But that would have been suicide. Well, she said again, still. Hesitating, still refusing to say no. The trunchbull sensed that the child was thinking and she didn't like it. Stand up when you speak to me. She snapped. What is your name? Matilda stood up and said, My name is Matilda Warmwood, Miss Trunchbull. Warmwood, is it? The Trunchbull said. In that case, you must be the daughter of that man who owns Warmwood Motors? Yes, Miss Trunchbull. He's a crook, the Trunchbull shouted. A week ago, he sold me a second-hand car that he said was almost new. I thought he was a splendid fellow then, but this morning, while I was driving the car through the village, the entire engine fell out on the road. The whole thing was filled with sawdust. The man's a thief and a robber. I'll have his skin for sausages, you see if I don't. He's clever at his business, Matilda said. Clever my foot, the Trunchbull shouted. Miss Honey tells me that you are meant to be clever too. Well, madam, I don't like clever people. They are all crook crooked. You are most certainly crooked. Before I fell out with your father, he told me some very nasty stories about the way you behaved at home. But you'd better not try anything in this school, young lady. I shall be keeping a very careful eye on you from now on. Sit down and keep quiet. And that was part two of chapter 13. Chapter 14 for tomorrow will be the first miracle. So please go to Seesaw. Please write your favorite part from this chapter, chapter 13. And thanks for watching, fourth graders. And I hope that you're enjoying the read aloud book, which is Matilda.